Stay tuned, and I'd like to give you a small language lessons. Ohayo Keoka. <laughs> that means good morning, church, in Japanese. Have you known on this lockdown? I've been to many places around the world, which I've taken a good interest into Japan. It's a very good place. They have a beautiful culture, and though the language may seem a little hard, it's quite easy you can get used to it very fast and i'd like to say one more thing happy sabusu <laughs> happy sabbath everyone Amen. good morning brethren morning. you don't need to stand for the prayer you can sit where you are. The word of God says in the 26th chapter of Isaiah, verses 3 and 4, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. May you bow your heads with me as I pray. O oh, upright God, may you keep all mine in perfect peace when there's scarcity and lack. <coughs> may you keep all mine in perfect peace despite COVID and the troubles that it brings to disrupt our lives. May you keep us in perfect peace despite the predictions that they make for the 2020 hurricane season. May you keep all mine in perfect peace when we open the refrigerators and the cupboards and there's barely enough to eat. May you keep us in perfect peace when we feel hopeless and depressed, when we have to take care of our parents and we are young and there's no respite for us. May you keep us in perfect peace when we lie on our bed, tossing and turning from anxiety and worry. We can't sleep. May you keep us in perfect peace. May you keep us in perfect peace as we homeschool our children and the task is hard, may you keep us in perfect peace, O oh Lord, my God. May you keep us in perfect peace when we feel depressed, when depression comes knocking on our door, when we look at a bank account and it hardly have any money on it. May you keep us in perfect peace, hallelujah. May you keep us in perfect peace when there's pains and aches all over our bodies. May you keep us in perfect peace. For you, O oh Lord, and my God is sovereign over every situation. And we, our hope is in you. Our strength is in you. Help us not to forget this, for your word is available to us. And I claim this promise over the lives of our brethren, over the church, over everything that we are doing today. May you be pleased, O oh Lord, as you keep our minds in perfect peace and stayed on you. I pray that you bless the speaker that you bless the participants, that you bless the brethren here and bless the brethren on YouTube and social media. May you bless this country and our leadership. May you keep us in perfect peace despite the marginalization and the victimization and everything that's happening around us. We should be in perfect peace because you promise that if we do so, that you will give it to us. I claim this promise for us in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you, O oh Lord, and my God, for helping me to pray. I was nervous, and I didn't want to do it. But Lord, thank you for using me, hallelujah, to pray for the brethren, myself included. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, 
Hello once again. I'd like to announce our opening song. Song number 135. Jesus is all the world for me. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day, without him I will fall. When I am sad to him I go, no other one can tell me so. When I am sad, He makes me glad. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me. I go to pray as all. I go to Him. Sunshine and the rain, he sends the harvest gold and grain. Sunshine and rain, harvest of grain, he's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, and to to him. Be. Oh, how could I this friend deny when he's so true to me? Following him, I know I'm right. He watches over me day and night. Following him by day. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I trust him now. I trust him when life eaten days shall end. Beautiful life. With such a friend, beautiful life that has no end, eternal life, eternal joy. He Before we take the offering, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this wonderful day that you have made and allowed us to experience. We thank you for bringing us through this work week to your beautiful Sabbath where we can receive spiritual food. We, we ask, we give you thanks and praise for everything, for providing for us, for keeping us at peace even when the storms around us. Um, rage, dear Lord. We thank you for being our friend, being a beautiful friend to us. We ask that you will continue to bless us physically and spiritually. Keep us in good health and strength and uh, continue to be our friend is our prayer in Jesus' name. We will now collect the offering.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. Wow. Why are there so many beautiful faces? Well, can't see your smiles, but I know you're smiling. All right, today's scripture reading, today's scripture reading will be taken from John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. And we'll be re reading responsively and the last chapter together. Well, very sorry. Ready? And the third day, there was a marriage in the Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Jesus saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. And saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifest forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll now have special music. Just run to and fro. No time for men, no time for God. But Jesus still loves us all. Jesus lived and Jesus died. And he's alive forevermore. He says to all, love everyone, and be a friend to all you see. To feed the poor as he did. Jesus love one and all. Sometimes we up, 
Sometimes we down Sometimes we almost to the ground But Jesus said Just call on him And he'll plant a feet on higher ground Jesus lives and Jesus died and he's alive forevermore he says to all love everyone and be a friend for that long, lovely song. He wrote it, for those who didn't know. <laughs> I haven't got past the prayers yet. I was truly blessed by the welcome. I'm truly being blessed this Holy Sabbath day. And I trust that all of us will be drawn closer to Christ as we go through the next half an hour, which we have left here. That is so strange and so new to me. I haven't got a custom yet. John chapter 2, verse 1 to 11, tells us the well-known story, which all of us know. We know it very well, about God's first miracle. Well, I should say the first recorded miracle. Where he turned water into wine. But today, as you notice, my caption is the invitation. Down through the ages, the story we read, the story we know, has turned our attention to Jesus' first miracle. But today, I want to not only embrace the wonder of that wonderful miracle, but also to turn our attention to the invitation that made the miracle possible. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I am just a lump of clay. Honestly, I am not even feeling well. But I thank you, dear God, for the opportunity to speak to your people. And I pray, dear God, that your Holy Spirit will take full control of this service and that we will all be drawn closer to you 
and we will accept the invitation to accept you as Savior and Lord of our lives. So bless this worship session, we pray, for Christ's sake. Amen. A few weeks ago, I jokingly said to my husband, Sweetheart, this would have been a good time for us to get married. <laughs> we would not have had to worry about our guest list. <laughs> the government and Corona has taken care of that. In Bible times, weddings were large and lasted for many days. This couple must have invited more people than they could have afforded. We know that from the story. Hence, the wine ran out. And I want to stay here a minute and let you know, in each of our lives, no matter how wealthy we are, no matter how good things are, the wine at some time runs out. But even though those persons, that young couple, invited so many people to their wedding, they had the wisdom, they had the sense enough to invite Jesus to their wedding. Jesus was invited. Jesus was not a crasher at the wedding. Jesus was not on the wannabe list. Jesus was invited. Did you invite Jesus to your wedding? You may say, Sister Donna, but I'm not even married. And those who are married might say, of course I did. The pastor did a beautiful prayer at my wedding. All the words, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder was said at the wedding. Let me hasten to let you know, not all couples are joined together by God. Some people might dispute it. For example, God does not join a male to a male. Neither does he join a female to a female. And if you don't believe me, I want you to take it to Genesis, take you to Genesis chapter 2. You may read from verse 18 to 25. But because of time, I will let you do that at home. Sister White encourages us. She said, if you are thinking of getting married, do not take this lightly. She said, if you used to pray one time, pray twice. Thanks for coming. She said you should double up your prayer time. You should spend a long time considering what decision you are making. You shouldn't pray and ask God to do what you want him to do. I'm going to tell you a story of a testimony someone shared a few years ago with me. He said he was in Bible school and he saw the young lady that he loved. The young lady he wanted to get married to. And he decided that he will pray about it. He tried, he tried, he tried to talk to her over and over. He tried to form a relationship, but she wouldn't bother with him. But he was being trained as a pastor, and that young lady had the pastor wife, inverted commas, look. You know, when I was a young girl in church in St. Vincent, our pastor's wives would have long hair, can play the piano, can sing, or have the, what we call, high color. Inverted commas. I wanted to mark my inverted commas. And he said that woman had all of that. She could sing, she had the color, she had the looks, she can play. 
the piano. And he decided, since she isn't taking his baits, he will pray about it. And he said, he was washing dishes. And he said, Lord, if that woman is not going to be mine, let some cockroaches come on these dishes now. Because in his mind, that is, there are no cockroaches around. The place is quite clean. And he said to his amazement, cockroaches did come. <laughs> and he decided, I'm not going to tell Jesus about it anymore. Eventually, they got married. And you know how that marriage turned out. He said he regretted that day he did not listen to Jesus. Jesus doesn't want you to invite him just to your wedding, to the wedding ceremony. He wants you to invite him into your life. Whether you're married or you're unmarried, because some of us would never get married. Jesus wants you to invite him into your life. When Jesus is invited into your life, he comes and he stays. I want to repeat it. When Jesus is invited into your life, he comes and he stays. And please, don't give him a room in your house. You have to give him the whole house. How do I know he stays? You're welcome. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5 says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you to the end of time. I can't give you that offer. My husband can't give me that offer. None of our parents can give us that offer. When you invite Jesus into your life, he comes and he stays. Like that couple that day, when Jesus is invited into your life, he makes a difference. When Jesus comes into your life, he makes a difference. He makes a big difference. In Psalms chapter 3 and verse 3, it says, He is the glory and the lifter up of your head. Amen? He is the glory and the lifter up of your head. You know how embarrassing it was to not have wine, to run out of wine at a wedding ceremony? They were embarrassed. But Jesus made a difference. He is the glory and the lifter up of your head. You know they didn't have to WhatsApp him. They didn't have to text him. They didn't have to give him a phone call because he was already there. there. He was there. And he said in Psalms chapter 41, 46, sorry, verse 1. You know, when I was a little child, my mother used to have me write down the scriptures and when I get home, you have to see them. So I trust that you're writing them down. In Psalms chapter 46 and verse 1, he says, I will be what? A present help in the time of trouble. A present help? When Jesus is in your life, you're going to say to me, I'm going to meet trouble? <laughs> yes. Troubles happen all the time to everybody, to anybody. It's a warfare. But he says, I will be with you in your time of trouble. In Psalms 138 and verse 5, the Lord says, he will perfect that which concerns you. And I want you to turn with me now to Isaiah chapter 41. And let us read verse 10. To 11. Isaiah chapter 41.
and it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were increased against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They, sh that they shall be as nothing, and they that strive with you shall perish. So the God he doesn't say, I'm going to leave you. He stays with you. He is with you in trouble. And when you get anxious and afraid, he said, don't be afraid. No matter what the battle is, the battle is not yours. It is mine. I will take care of you. In Isaiah 43, he goes on to say, verse 1 to 3, he said, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. What else he said in verse 2? When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flames kingle upon thee. And verse 3 says, For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Saba for thee. You see how precious and how important you are to Jesus? In Isaiah 61, 3, he promises, I will give you beauty for ashes. I can go on and on and on, quoting God's promises. Those who know me know I love claiming his promises. Now in John chapter 2 and verse 9, when the MC tasted the wine Jesus made, he could not resist it. He saw the difference. He asked, why? Why did you leave the best for last? So often, we leave Jesus for the last. When we have gone through our hard times, when we have taken matters in our own hands, when we have done it our way and we have failed, sometimes the enemy messes us up so badly that we are in shame to invite Jesus into our lives. John 10, 10 says, the enemy, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I love that text. I really love that passage of scripture because it doesn't end there. It says, but I am come that you might have and that you might have it more abundantly. Praise God. You know the enemy comes to steal you because you don't belong to him. You were created by God for his glory. The Bible says that. You are a child of the living God. You don't belong to the enemy. It's a, it's a controversy, you know, between God and the enemy. He wants your soul. He tries so hard to get your soul. You have to have your mind. It has to be a mind invitation. You have to decide. You want Jesus in your life. I am happy I gave my life to Jesus when I was just a child. Now, if you invite Jesus into your heart, he will come in and he will give you a new heart. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26. Ezekiel 36 and verse 26. Let's read together. It says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. 
God is the only person who can do that. He is the only person who can give you a new heart. He's a master heart surgeon. Some persons whom I know, and who you know too, might have had heart surgery. And we give God thanks that they survived. Some people didn't survive. But when Jesus does his heart surgery, if you are truly committed to becoming a new man, you will be saved. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth, and you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. Are you tired of living the life described in Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21? Turn to Galatians chapter 5. Let's hear what type of life the Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21. It says... Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So all those things, that's the lifestyle of a person who is living in the flesh. That's not a lifestyle that God wants for us. The lifestyle he wants for us is found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 25. And it says, But a fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That's what God wants for us. Today, I have come here to encourage you to invite Jesus into your heart. I can assure you that Galatians chapter 22 and 26 will be yours. Why? I have proven him. I have tasted and seen that the Lord is good. And he is getting sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Do I have troubles? Do I have situations? Do I have, oh my goodness, you don't want to hear my story. Jesus loves you. Yes, he loves you. And he wants to take you to live with him when he comes. The story is told of a boy who went to an art exhibition with his dad. Lynn, you can help me please. They stood there watching the artist painting of Jesus knocking at the door. And as the father looked at the painting, he said to his son, you know, son, this um, artist is usually a very good artist, but I think he left out something on this painting. Maybe he got tired when he was doing it, but he left out something. And the son said, what did he leave out, dad? He said, don't look at it carefully. What did you notice? He said, there is no handle on the door. And the son said to his dad, but dad, if Jesus is knocking on your heart's door, he does not need a handle on the outside. The handle is expected to be on the inside. You are the one who have to open the door. Today, I'm here. Everyone who is hearing my voice, whether you're sitting here or on TV land or radio land or whatever land, YouTube land, 
social media land. Wherever you are today, I am alive and you are alive to receive this invitation. I don't know if this will be the last opportunity I have to give you an invitation to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I don't know who would have this opportunity and hear it for the last time. You might have been given the opportunity many times before, and you might have said, wait, Jesus. I am too young. You might have said, wait, Jesus. I have a lot of things to do. You might have said, wait, Jesus. I am really messed up. I have done this before, and it didn't work out. You might have said over and over, wait to Jesus. The hunger is on the inside. I'm saying it for myself, and I'm saying it for everyone. Let's just turn that handle and allow Jesus into your heart. Make Jesus your personal Savior and Lord. Jesus died for our sins. And for those persons who accept what he has done on the cross of Calvary, he becomes your savior. But today I'm asking you not just to make him your savior, but to make him the Lord of your life. When Jesus becomes the Lord of your life, obedience takes on. Obedience, you obey him, you want to get closer to him. You want to taste him and see that he is good. You want to get the excitement of knowing him and proving him. Today, I'm inviting us, please give your life to Jesus. When you give your life to Jesus, it's not an easy road. I'm not gonna stand up here and let you know and think it's all is well, all is well all the time. Because you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers who want your soul. But as I said earlier, he promised, I am going to be with you to the end of time. I want to look at another invitation that was given at that wedding. The invitation that was given to Jesus' mother. Not because she's Jesus' mother, but I see her as a friend. Now, Jesus doesn't leave us there by ourselves because we are social beings. He wants us to have friends. He wants us to have friendship. And our friendship can make us and break us. Many a marriage have gone astray because of their friends. Many. Somebody say, oh, their mother. <laughs> yes. But believe you me, Mary was a good friend to the couple. You notice her tact? She didn't even tell the, 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 um, the MC that there was no wine. She saw a need and she went hurriedly and she took care of that need to save her friend's face. Are you such a friend? Are you a fair weather friend? When you give your life to Jesus, believe you me, you are going to meet friends who are going to help you. You are going to meet friends who are going to, yes, you will meet some who will discourage you. Don't worry about those. You meet them at your workplace too and you still go to work every day. You are going to meet friends. You are going to meet people, even in the body of Christ, who are not marching to Zion as you would expect them to. Don't worry about that. Pray and ask God to give you good Christian friends. Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1 says, Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. It means that it is very important for you to have godly friends. You need friends who will encourage you, friends who will cover your back, friends who will cheer you on when the going gets rough. Friends who may not have money to give to you, but they will say, let me give a sincere prayer for you. Or they may allow you to lie on their, shoul their shoulder and cry, do your boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. 
you need those types of friends. When you give your life to Jesus, yes, he is a perfect friend. But he also wants us to have human friendship. And I pray that each person will be that type of friend to the other. Today, I want to thank God for this opportunity to allow me to speak with you. In fact, to speak to us and to let you know how true and mighty my God is. The songwriter says, how long has it been? since you talked with the Lord. How long has it been? I want to invite you to in your heart, because we can't make an altar call for you to come to the altar. I want to invite you to talk to God in your heart. Ask God to help you to have the wisdom to accept the invitation that he is giving to you. You might have felt the Holy Spirit knocking on your heart's door and the enemy is saying, not today. Wait a little while, wait a little longer. I do not know who is hearing this invitation today for the last time. You may say it in your heart, but I'm real messed up. I have gone the wrong way. That's okay. Jesus wants you to do one thing, and that is to turn the handle. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 15 says, Today, if you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Today, if you're interested in having a Bible study, I would like to ask Brother Lynn to give, put on the screen the number of a pastor and the personal ministry leader, our first elder, and my number is there as well. I feel the urge to end this sermon with a song. And if you so desire, as I sing this song, and you have made it in your, made up in your heart that you want to give your heart to Jesus, I will just invite you to stand to your feet. 289. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world to keep you
Reverend, today I have done what God has asked me to do. I have invited you to make Jesus your Savior and your Lord. I have given my heart anew to Jesus, and he is my personal friend. Today, the invitation as we leave is for us individually to accept him as our Lord and Savior. And I pray that God is going to bless us all because I know we have all chosen to accept him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are truly grateful to you for this opportunity that you afforded us today. We have heard your scripture and we have chosen, dear Lord, to have a peaceful life, a life that is full of joy and happiness and temperance and everything that the fruit of the Spirit gives. Instead of a life of wickedness. Father, there are some people who are struggling with a decision. Father, they might say, you know, I have to get it all fixed up and straightened up first. But I pray, dear God, that they will understand that you are the best person for that. There are some people who are struggling, they don't even know which day is the correct day of worship. Whatever the situation is, dear loving God, just let them turn their hearts over to you and you will open their eyes and lead them into the right path of righteousness. Father, bless all those who have heard my voice today and whenever. And I pray dear God that we will all make a decision to follow you as our Savior and Lord. That that door will be opened to allow you to come in. So bless us again and grant us traveling mercies and save us all for your glory. For Christ's sake, amen. Once again, the numbers are there. If you require Bible study, if you require a visit, get in touch with any of those numbers and make your requests known. May God bless us and help us to stay faithful and true. Thank you so much, Elder Smith, for your clear and encouraging message. And remember to put Jesus at the top of that invitation list because he's not going to crash your occasion. He's not a crasher. All right, we're going to continue with singing. Uh, the hymn is 186, I've Found a Friend. I've Found a Friend, 186.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you once again for what you have allowed us to experience today. We thank you for all of those who have made themselves available for your service. The technicians, the persons on the program, the musicians, Elder Smith for making herself a vessel so that your message, and especially your message today of encouragement, can be shared with those who are physically here and those who have tuned in via media, uh, various platforms. We ask the Lord that you will help us to remember that you are there waiting to come in. Help us to remove through the work of the Holy Spirit the locks on our hearts that you can come into us to dwell. And just like you have shown at the wedding in turning the water into wine, that it was not to prove that you